Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. I am Dr. Sona Ahuja, Associate Professor. Today we will talk about nature of assessment of mathematics learning. And here we would try to answer these questions. What is the nature of mathematics learning? What are the principles on which assessment of mathematics learning is based? And what is the criteria of good assessment? So let's address the first question, what is the nature of mathematics learning? In order to answer this question, we should know that the, at the early stage of schooling, it is very important that student is involved in the process of learning and he is actively interacting with the immediate environment. For example, in this image, you can see that rather than just teaching numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 to a learner, we give them objects so that he can relate the number concept with the objects. And yet another image, you can see that students are actively engaged in the learning process and they are playing with the images, with the 3D images. So while teaching, we have to ensure that students see, they visualize, they do what they learn. And the next important thing is, that we should move from concrete to abstract. We have to give them concrete learning experiences. So while teaching the fundamental operations of mathematics, how to add the numbers, give them the objects, ask them to add the objects and then give the symbols to those objects. Symbol to three objects, symbol to two objects and the sum of the objects. Thus, if they visualize what they do, then the learning becomes easier. And in another example, again, you can see here that when we give fractions, the concept of fractions to the students, 4 by 8, 2 by 4, 1 by 2, these are just symbols which are formed in the mind. But they would learn easier if we make them visualize the symbols. You can give them the pieces, break into half, break into again one more half that is two quarters or four quarters of the entire whole or even breaking further into pieces thus giving them the concept that half can, is equal to two by four which is equal to four by eight thus the concept of fractions can be given to them by making them visualize or perform the activities related to mathematics this contextual understanding will help them to master the basic conceptual framework. Now let's address the second question. What are the principles on which the assessment of mathematics learning is based? The first principle states that assessment should reflect that mathematics is an important subject for students to learn. And this is called the content principle. It is important that students should realize how significant mathematics is there in their lives. Without understanding the importance of mathematics, it is like they are just groping in the dark. They don't know what they are learning. So, they should be able to know what they are doing and then they should be able to do also. This is what the content principle states. The second principle for assessment is learning principle which states that assessment should be learning should provide learning opportunities as well as opportunities for students to demonstrate what they know and can do. Thus, it creates the meta-awareness in students. Once they know what they know, they can move ahead. Once they know what they do not know, they can solve those problems or discuss with the teacher their problems and they can learn. Thus, then they can know what they don't know and they know what they know. So this is the learning principle. They should know the status of their learning. And this also helps teachers to design the instructional strategies for the students. If student is able to perform a problem, to solve a problem, to learn a concept and teacher knows through assessment that student is able to do this, then teacher can move to the next concept. And once teacher realizes that student is not able to perform this, then teacher can repeat the concept or redesign the instructional strategy. So, the learning principle states that assessment should be such that teachers should be able to make instructional decisions. Thus, 
it should support good instructional practice rather than just grading the student. It also states that the assessment should not be at the end of the course. It should be routine part of ongoing classroom activity. Like it should be that teacher should ask questions while introducing the lesson, while developing the lesson, while recapitulating the lesson. In summarizing also teacher can involve students and their teacher can assess whether student is able to follow the taught content or not, whether student is able to learn what is being taught in the class or not. So it is not necessary that assessment has to be summative, but it should be formative in the true sense that on daily basis and every moment basis in different phases of teaching, learner is assessed. This is what learning principle states. The next is the equity principle, which states that Assessment should support every student's opportunity to learn important mathematics. We should not define students by their performance, that these are bright learners, average or slow learners. But teachers should believe that every student has opportunity to learn maths and every student can learn mathematics. This is what is the equity principle that we do not divide the students based on their performance. Also, it states that assessment should be a means of fostering growth toward high expectations rather than just a filter used to deny students that the opportunity to learn is not for them. They should not be denied the opportunity to learn. Usually what happens is when students get the score of their performance, they think that the highest scorers can perform in mathematics and low scorers cannot. So they deviate from the subject and they leave out from that subject. But we should not do this filtering through assessment. Assessment has to be used for improving and knowing the student status of the learning. Also, the equity principle says that different approaches should be used in the assessment like essay type or long type questions, short answer questions, objective type questions or oral to performance tests. And then it should have adaptations for bilingual students like English may not be the language of all the students. Others may be speaking in their mother tongue or Hindi or some regional language. Then they should also be accommodated in the assessment. There should be adaptations for students with special needs. If there are slow learners, then the question paper should be such that there are some easy questions also. So there should be kind of normal probability curve which states that the number of questions with difficulty level easy to high should be equal. Easy questions and difficult, very difficult level questions should be same and then there should be most of the students of the moderate difficulty level so that it addresses all different kind of students and it makes it inclusive for them. Now the next question is what is the criteria of good assessment? Good assessment is the one which provides information about assessment pro process to all those affected by it. That is, if teacher is using the assessment, then she should get the feedback about her instructional strategies. If student is being the part of the assessment process, then he should get the input or the output that how his performance is, the status of his learning. So it should have sufficient information for both teachers and students. Also, teachers should be active participants in all phases of assessment process. Now, there are different phases of assessment process, right from the planning to evaluation and the follow-up. So, it's not the duty of the teacher just to prepare the question paper, but to plan in advance so as to be inclusive and comprehensive. Inclusive, we just discussed, that is, it should be prepared according to the learning levels of all different kinds of students in the class and it should cover entire content. Coverage of the content should not be biased. All the topics should be equally covered and there are such other aspects which we will study in other classes. So it has to be comprehensive, well planned and then the second phase is the implementation. When student is performing the sums or the exam, at that time also teachers should not only really invigilate the class to check that students are copying or not but should also see how students perform the test. 
what strategy students is using, what is his mental state, does he get nervous with certain types of questions, there are any behavioral problems he, if student faces when he sees a question paper. So during the implementation phase also, teachers should be very active and actively monitor the student's performance and student's progress. And after that, wherever there are problems in the different areas of different students, teachers should give the appropriate follow-up, also the remedial teaching wherever required. So in short, teacher has to be active in all phases of the assessment process. Assessment should provide valid interference. And by validity here, we mean that it should measure what it ought to measure. Teacher prepares the assessment with some objectives. And these objectives are based on the learning objectives teacher has stipulated for the course. All these learning objectives should be measured by the assessment instrument developed by the teacher. And then this assessment instru instrument is called valid. That is, it measures all the learning objectives predefined for the students of that level. Assessment should be open to scrutiny and modification. Teacher has not to be closed that if once teacher has assessed, evaluated the assessment, then there can be no change. If student comes to teacher that he is not satisfied with the marks, he should be shown the answer sheet. If student does not see the answer sheet after the evaluation, he does not get the feedback. He does not know where he has committed errors, where he is wrong. So it is very necessary that after evaluation, teachers should show the answer sheets to the students and let him go through the each and every step, each and every marking, scoring that teacher has given to that answers. And if student is not satisfied, teacher should be open to discuss his queries related to assessment and should be open if student has some points which are valid to the modification so that it does not just give him the score but actual status of his learning process. There should be ample opportunities to identify areas of learned and not learned. That is, as we said, that's to, it should give the meta-awareness to students to know what he has learned and to know what he has not learned. Once he knows what he has learned, he can strengthen those areas and this motivates him to learn maths more. And once he knows what he has not learned, he can improve upon or he can put his energies in those directions, in those areas which he has not yet learned. So assessment should provide the opportunities to the students for this meta-awareness of their performance. It should contribute to the goal of mathematics learning, that is, it should meet, meet the objectives for which mathematics is, mathematical instructions are designed. It should overcome the passive view of rote learning, that is, while preparing assessment, we should be careful that we do not only add recall type of questions, but we should also address the objectives of higher order thinking like evaluation, understanding, comprehension, analysis, creating and so on. So we should not only have questions like who has given this formula or what is the formula which just emphasizes on the rote learning. Student has crammed the formula. He remembers that profit is this selling price minus S cost price but he does not know the concept. So he would just reproduce the formula whereas he must not have learned the skill where to use the formula. So it should be taken care that when we design assessment, we not only assess the recall ability of the learner, but his other higher order abilities also. Then it should indicate what students should learn. The assessment should clearly inform students the areas in which he needs to improve. There should be appropriate sequence of mathematics learning. You must have seen when you were in schools that 
e each textbook has a sequence of chapters and we don't say chapter X, chapter Y, rather we say chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. This is because all the content in different subject has logical and psychological order. There are certain concepts which are to be learned first and which are to be learned later. So assessment should address this also. The concepts which are to be learned first should be assessed first. So there is a proper sequence which is to be followed while assessing mathematics learning. Assessment should be experiential and contextual. Can you think what does it mean? When we say experiential and contextual, it says that while assessing mathematics learning, it should be kept in mind that the problems which we give to the students relate to their real life so that they can think of the applications of the concepts that they have learned. For example, you teach them major sector and minor sector. So just asking them to define major sector or minor sector or maybe just drawing major sector and minor sector will not suffice. You should give them an, for example, you can give a draw a clock and then say that draw a major sector and minor sector out of it so that we can paint the major sector and this can give a good design to us. So thus he can relate the concept of sectors that he is learning through the problem. So assessment should also provide the opportunity to experiential and contextual learning. It should move from concrete to abstract rather than just directly giving the symbols or the abstract mathematics, we should start with the algebra, we should start with the concrete learning where they can visualize. Certain topics cannot be visualized so easily but there are certain others wherein we can give good examples. For example, when we say sine theta, cos theta, these are just numbers when student learns trigonometry first time. So we should not directly jump to this, we should start with triangles, the ratio of the sides that gives them the concepts of sine and cos and then gradually move to the angles of trigonometry or trigonometrical ratios and the identities. So it is important that we move from concrete to abstract. The assessment should cover orality to performance activity to written. That is assessment should be com comprehensive in the sense different type of assessment tools, variety of assessment tools should be used so that all different types of abilities of students are assessed. Along with the oral tests and the written tests, there should also be performance tests wherein student is able to handle equipment, the models, the 3D shapes of mathematics and perform some activity that reinforces him and makes the assessment more interesting. Now let's summarize by saying what are the objectives of good assessment of mathematics learning. It has two main dimensions. The first is it should enhance mathematics learning. If I know that I score 5 out of 10 in mathematics, it is of no importance to me. 5 is just a number and 5 out of 10 signifies that I have learned 50% of the concepts. But it does not tell me what I have not learned. So assessment should provide the ample opportunity to a learner to know what he has learned and what he has not learned. Thus, one of the important objectives of assessment of mathematics learning is enhancement of learning. And the second is useful for the teacher to support good instructional practice. Teacher should also get feedback on his instructional strategies, whether she has to redesign the instructional strategies or she can continue using the already used instructional practices. Suppose 80% uh, of my students are not able to perform certain kinds of problems or certain kinds of concepts are not clear to it. It is clear that I have to change my strategy for that because 80% of students not performing means majority of students have not performed. And for other examples say that there is a concept, see again profit and loss, and just 20% of students or say less than that, 10% or 15% of students are not able to perform in that. That means instead of entirely redesigning my instructional strategy, I have to work on the students and identify 
if they have particular problems and I will have to redesign my strategies for them also. Maybe I can diagnose the weakness areas and provide them the remedial teaching. Thus, the assessment not only provides feedback to the student but also to the teacher which helps teacher to improve his instructional strategies. Now, assessment has to be comprehensive, that is, all content should be covered, all topics prescribed for that period should be covered and then all learning objectives should be covered as we discussed the hierarchy of learning objectives right starting from the recall to application and to creation should be covered and variety of assessment tools should be used so to make assessment more interesting and user friendly. At the end we would say that learning objectives and instructional strategies have continuous interaction in them. Whatever learning objectives are there, according to that, we design instructional strategies and this integrated approach we also adopt for learning objectives and assessment. The assessment is purely based on the learning objectives. For example, right now I told, we discussed that if our learning objective is student will be able to define, student will be able to construct student will be able to solve, then accordingly our assessment questions would be. So we have to follow integrated approach and this integration has also to be there in learning objectives and the assessment. Assessment purely is purely based on the learning objectives. Our assessment tools and items depend on the learning objectives. For example, the learning objectives are the student will be able to define the student will be able to solve, the student will be able to construct, then accordingly I can select the tools. And assessment in turn provides the feedback to the learning objectives that whether the learning objectives are achieved or not. So these are again interrelated and the third interrelation is among the instructional strategies and the assessment. Assessment also gives feedback to the instructional strategies. Thus, all three concepts, learning objectives, assessment and instructional strategies are integrated. And in order to be assessment to be comprehensive, teacher has to see to it that all three go together and we adopt integrated approach. Learning objectives should tell us how the assessment should be. Assessment should give feedback whether learning objectives are achieved or not then learning objectives should be the base for instructional strategies and instructional strategies should be designed uh, uh, on the feedback of the assessment and assessment should tell us what kind of instructional strategies we should design for the learner. So this will help the student to self-monitor and to self-regulate his learning. So let's see whether you have understood what we discussed or not, try to answer these questions for self-evaluation. What are the objectives of assessment of mathematics learning? What are the principles of assessment of mathematics learning? What is the nature of assessment of mathematics learning? Thank you.